My name is Sophie van der Zee and um, I work at the computer laboratory here at the University of Cambridge. And we're today going to talk about uh, behavioral economics and how people make decisions under risk. So people constantly make decisions involving different levels of risk and uncertainty. Just think about all the decisions you had to make between getting up this morning and arriving at work. What were you going to have for breakfast? What were you going to wear? And whenever you leave the house, is it safe to cross the street? Because decisions have such a large effect on how we behave, psychologists and economists have tried to capture human decision making under risk in theoretical models to both explain and predict how people are going to behave. So the most dominant theory for about two centuries was the expected utility theory created by Daniel Bernoulli in 1738. The expected utility theory has sort of three important concepts that I would like you to try to capture. The first one is utility, um, which is not sort of the absolute value of whatever you're, you're um, grasping, so for example money, but it's the psychological value. The second concept is wealth, which is sort of the current state, what you have at the moment of having to make a decision. And the last one is that it's a rational choice model. So let's start with utility. Um, utility is important to understand that utility does not increase proportionally with the amount of money. So for example, when you have a certain amount of money, the first pound extra um, is not the same thing, is worth more than number 10 or number 100. So whenever you're looking at gamble or making decisions on a risk, um, you need to assess it by its expected utility rather than the expected absolute value. The second um, concept is wealth, um, because what the utility of something is depends on what you have to start off with. So for example, if you have the chance to um, win 10 pounds, that means something very differently for someone who only has 10 pounds than for someone who has 100, 1,000 or maybe 100,000 pounds to start off with. Therefore, wealth or your current state is included in the um, analysis when you're trying to calculate what the best option is. And all this together means that the expected utility theory is a model of rational choice. It's based on the idea that people act rationally. And how this works is you take what people have, the wealth, to start off with. Then look at the different options you have and the probability of those options occurring. You then calculate what the possible outcome is and you choose the best option. So for example, if you have a 60% chance of winning £10, the expected value is £6. Whenever you have a 50% chance of winning £10, the expected value is £5. So if you have to choose between the expecting to win £6 or £5, people rationally will choose £6, because winning more is better. So people are expected to choose the best option. However, um, we know that although we're capable, we're able to um, make rational choices, we actually often don't do that. And I'm going to discuss two different reasons of why we don't with you today. And the first one is uh, called prospect theory, and that's based on the idea that people actually behave irrational um, because they're less willing to gamble with profits than they are to gamble with, pro with losses. Sorry. And the second one is called heuristics, and that's the idea that we use mental shortcuts. Instead of calculating all the possible options, we use those mental shortcuts to make a snapshot decision. And it's also called intuitive thinking. Because think about it, when you left your house this morning, you're trying to cross the street. If you had actually been standing there calculating the risks that were involved with crossing the street at that moment, by the time you're done, the situation has changed. So instead, you look, you make a snap decision, and you go. So these are called heuristics. So to start off with, with prospect theory, um, Kahneman and Tversky came up with this in 1979. And just to give you a bit of an indication of how important, how influential this theory has been, um, Kahneman actually received the Nobel Prize for this work in 2002. And the main idea behind prospect theory is that people don't always make rational decisions because they value gains and losses differently. And this is gained around one sort of central theme, which is called loss aversion. We like winning, but we don't like losing. And that changes our behavior. So the idea is that one bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Okay, so how this looks like, we have a graph for this. And on the x-axis you can see um, the gains on the right-hand side and the losses on the left-hand side. And on the y-axis 
um, and you can see how people experience emotions, how they value things. So whenever someone gains a hundred pounds, as you can see on the right hand side, it makes them quite happy. However, when they lose a hundred pounds, the same amount of money, but instead of gaining it, they're losing it, you can see that they actually feel much more negatively. Um, so the depth of their emotions is stronger when they're um, having losses than when they're having gains. And this leads to loss aversion. We're trying to avoid these negative emotions. How that affects behavior can be seen in this graph, where again, losses and gains are on the x-axis and the um, emotions and behavior are on the y-axis. So what you can see on the right-hand side is that whenever people are faced with um, gaining something, they like to keep this gain. So they're going to be risk averse. They're going to try and avoid losing this. However, whenever people are faced with potential losses, we don't like losing. So we're more risk-seeking to try to avoid having to lose anything in general. So just to give you an example of how these two theories actually um, can explain different types of behavior, I have the example of the Asian flu. Imagine that there is a disease and that people are probably going to die. And there are two programs to sort of battle this disease and you need to choose which one is a better idea. In program A, 200 people will be saved. In program B, there's a one-third probability that 600 people will be saved, but a two-third probability that no one will be saved. So if you would calculate the expected value of program B, you will take one-third of 600, which is again the 200 people are likely to be saved. So the absolute outcome of both programs is the same. Therefore, in the expected utility theory, we expect people to not have a preference for program A or B, because the outcome is the same. However, when you ask people to do this, it turns out that actually it does matter. And this is explained by prospect theory. Because people will have a preference for program A, um, so they prefer 200 people being saved over the chance that maybe no one will be saved. And this is a very nice example of how people, whenever they're gaining something, they don't want to lose it again, so they're very risk averse. They'd rather take whatever they can instead of risking to, lose it, to, to not gain anything. So what if you turn it around? Um, in this example, there again are two programs to battle, to battle this disease. In program C, 400 people will die. And in program D, there's a one-third probability that no one will die. But there's a two-third probability that 600 people will die. Again, if you do the maths, two-thirds of 600 means that in program D, again, 400 people are likely to die. So the absolute outcome is the same. So according to the expected utility theory, we don't expect a difference. We expect people to have a similar preference for program C and program D. However, when we ask people to do this, uh, people actually do show preference. And now they show preference for program D. They actually like to risk it. So <coughs> this is the idea of whenever you frame this as people being a likely to die. And um, this is a lost situation and people don't like losing. So whenever they are faced with a potential loss, like in program D, um, people will pre sort of prefer risking it all in the chance to save everyone. So people are risk seeking whenever they're facing potential loss. So what have we learned about prospect theory? Um, well, first, people do not always make a rational decision and they don't always choose the best option on paper. Experiments show consistently that people deviate from rationality in a very consistent and predictable manner. And one of the reasons is that people sort of value gains and losses differently and therefore behave differently. So what I wanted to show you with this example um, of the Asian flu is that it really matters how you're framing things. Because in all four programs, 200 people were going to live and 400 people were going to die. So that didn't change. The absolute outcome of none of the programs changed. However, we changed phrasing it as a gain situation or a loss situation. And what we show is that phrasing it in a gain situation or a loss situation actually changes people's preferences and their behavior. So it ain't what you say, but it's the way you say it. 